And every time that we do something new, all the time, he was like, this is not authentic. But I was like, well, we're not trying to be authentic. Pho is not even an authentic Vietnamese dish. Hi, my name is Viet, CEO and executive chef of Key Concepts. I can confidently say a whole entire cuisine is already huge. Before I'm doing this entire company, I already knew that we're gonna go into a backlash. And I, I think I found the permission to do it through how I grow up. Key Concept is such a highly respected, renowned restaurant group in Orange County. First off, introduce our viewers to what Key Concepts is and what your mission is. Yeah, well, Key Concept has been found in 2018, so we're, we're fairly young. Me, together with a few partners, we got together. Uh, we're all Vietnamese um, to start. Um, our fourth partner is actually Chinese. We also here to serve Vietnamese Americans, yes, but Asian Americans also. You know, about two million Vietnamese people or Vietnamese descendant. It's, in Southern California alone, it's about half a million. And we felt like there's not a single group that can represent us on the main stage. Here we are at Nep Cafe, which pays homage to French Vietnamese cuisine. Yes. What it really is, is people think that I'm doing something new and interesting, but it's actually not. So if you go back to Vietnam right now, these type of foods are all over the place. We here only know probably a few things, right? Uh, it bothers me a little yeah. bit as I'm developing recipes, better Vietnamese soups that's not mainstream. There's a, a lot of misconception about what we call authenticity, right? right. Authentic food. Pho is not even an authentic Vietnamese dish. <laughs> and there's so many other things that is in Vietnamese cuisine yeah, on its own, is already a fusion cuisine. Uh, we're starting out with gathering, hunting, 4000 BC, all the way to a time where we even established a country all the way from the north. We didn't even have the south yet. Yeah. And so from the north, you know, we're hugely influenced by Chinese cuisine. And then as you kind of go down south, then you got trading with Laos, Cambodia, and then Thailand, occupied by the French, and then the Americans. So in its own, if you look at a lot of the dishes we have today, the cuisine just got more and more interesting. I can confidently say a whole entire cuisine is already a fusion. So I want to talk about your other restaurants and key concepts. Yes. You have Inai and Bowl. What was the inspiration for that since it's not directly related to Vietnamese yeah. cuisine? Uh, I would say 2018. I start traveling back to Vietnam a lot more. The things that we eat here, or we call it Vietnamese food, is no longer that predominant diet that they have. Every day, they don't eat pho, they don't eat no. <laughs> they, they don't eat those kind of things anymore. And they also eat Italian cuisine, Japanese cuisine, Korean cuisine every single day. And I want to tell that story. I want to tell people that Vietnamese cuisine, Vietnamese people now, is very different, very modern Southeast Asian cuisine, which is gem. And I, I, I wanted to show more of that. So not just what we used to be anymore, what we are, what we will be. Nice to meet you. I'm nice, Keeler. Nice to meet you. I want to talk about roles specifically because later on we're going to go over there. But on the website, you talk about how Wool's unique ideology when it comes to old school versus new school sushi. We recently met up with Chef Eve from Sushi Eve, who's very much into the very traditional yes. Japanese cuisine. Some common critiques of Asian fusion as Asian fusion restaurants as well as putting unique or elevated spin are that it's whitewashing or like cultural appropriation. What are your thoughts on this and how do you think that we navigate through this specifically with Roll? <laughs> Every time we talk about this topic, I get very passionate. The duality of new school versus old school, nowhere more, I would say, prominent as in Japan. If you go to Japan, a lot of the shops have been there for centuries. Yes. And people love that. And what the Japanese government has empowered is that we're gonna use every single ounce of our energy to protect that old school traditional art. But at the same time, we're gonna spend equally the amount of power on new school, new technology, new, I would say, innovations. So I, I think it's important when we talk about old school and new school in cooking, is that we allow both right. to happen at the same time. 
Hi, my name's uh, Chef Martin. I've been working for Roll Handlebar for about two years now. I've been doing sushi for about 10 years total. So we, we use a timer to season our rice every 10 minutes. You just hit start and then I'll go. Now Chef Martin is challenging me to make a handle <laughs> in 10 seconds. Maybe 12. <laughs> Maybe 12. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> when you're ready. There you go. <laughs> oh no! It's okay. You're good, you're good. It's yeah. so good and it's so fun to make. So yeah, some of our rollers are out here just doing like 22 seats at one time. So Inari is a fried tofu skin. It's very popular amongst a lot of sushi restaurants. Uh, I think we wanted to bring it so that we can have a little piece of sushi, a little bit of piece of home here as well. Even though we're very contemporary, we wanted to bring something a little old school to the, to the restaurant. So this first one is our uh, Kizami wasabi, freshly grated wasabi and it's pickled. So it usually takes about three bites to finish a hand roll. I always let guests know to dip each bite in a different sauce. And then once you're about 80% through, then we'll pour the broth for you. Kind of have done that with roll hand bar, taking like the very trendy hand rolls that came from LA that no one was doing it. So you yeah. brought it down to Orange County. Yeah. And then the Kaisen dog, you got that idea from Japan. That was one thing that really popped out of, uh, of the whole trip. But something so simple. It's just chopped fish on top of rice and then the bone that make a broth out of it. That's it. I think you would love the one in Japan too, but hey, the ones that we serve you right now also have its own uniqueness too. And every time that we do something new, all the time, he was like, this is not authentic. But I was like, well, we're not trying to be authentic. I would love to enjoy a bowl of pho with you to go to my phone. I would love to eat a nam noon with you at Brodar. They're amazing. Those are the places that will continue to exist and they're authentic and we love that. But let me tell you a story of the other side. Of how we grew of up. Of how we grew up. Yes. That nobody tells our story, so this is the voice I'm letting you. What's the audacity, the audacity of, of me doing all of this, right? What right do I have to even do this kind of thing? I found the permission to do it through how I grew up because I was so lost. That's your story. Yeah, that's my story. I, I, grew, I, I grew up lost. I left my country when I was 16. I don't know how to fit in. This is my story. I feel like I'm getting emotional because yeah. like you're speaking what I have been feeling for so long. And it's like, I love that we're having this conversation because I think it's so important for the viewers that grew up in our generation to hear this story too, it's so divided, and you have to stay in this box of being yeah. so authentic. So my last question is, so I'm thinking about developing a second cookbook that really speaks to the audience that we just talked about. Yeah. What is your advice to the food that we share in this cookbook, and what do you think that they're looking for? I honestly think that the Generation Z and the millennials, they're a little bit faster on their feet. They don't have a lot of time. Incorporating cooking techniques that are using their everyday life is important. I think most cookbooks require too many things. One pot and a microwave, I can make thousands of dishes. Like the other day, I made chow and mushi in a microwave. How important do you think it is to stay authentic to the food that we grew up with? And like you said earlier, giving myself permission to go cross yeah. those boundaries and go into the fusion and just take that leap and do it. You cannot fool yourself. You can fool a lot of other people, you cannot fool yourself. Yeah. I attempted traditional authentic food before. Oh, you did? I did. It never really worked out for me because it was never for me. I wasn't born into a family where, you know, my grandpa or grandma handed down like a written recipe. Yeah, me neither. They never, yeah. they're just like, yeah. over here, over there. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't have that experience. So to tell people that what I'm doing is because I'm listening to my grand, that would be a very cool story, yeah. but it's not true. I'm in that generation where East meets West. I'm traveling, I'm a nomad, I'm, a, I'm everywhere. My lifestyle has to speak to 
the things that I'm eating every day, who you are, that's your diet, that's how you grow up. Show people that. Well, thank you so much. I loved our conversation today, yeah, and I'm so excited for our viewers to yeah. visit all of your restaurants because they're amazing. Thank and you. yeah, is there anything else you want to say? No, thanks. Thanks for supporting us for the last few years. And we have a lot more to show. <laughs> a lot more concepts. Well,